the fire is going to rain all over creation. And this is the fulfillment of prophecy because his legacy must come forward. As he said his final words, if those who took over were not able to perform their legacy, his legacy will come forward. And this is part of his legacy being revived even here at the Ethiopian Embassy. And we give thanks and praise on them for the last time for the opportunity and the privilege to be here. Here they are. The last this evening, uh, we are assembled to celebrate the 127th birthday anniversary of the late His Emperor, Majesty Haile Selassie. His Majesty Haile Selassie uh, served as regent from 1916 to 1930 and emperor from 1930 to 1974. His Majesty Haile Selassie is a towering figure not only in Ethiopian history but also African and world history. His Majesty's accomplishments on the world stage are too many to list. When the League of Nations was established after World War I in 1920, His Majesty made sure Ethiopia joined, making Ethiopia the only African member of the League. His Majesty was the only world leader allowed to address the League of Nations in 1936 after Italy invaded Ethiopia. Under His Majesty's leadership, Ethiopia became a founding member of the United Nations in 1945. His Majesty was a central figure in the formation of the Organization of African Union in 1963, the predecessor of the present African Union making Ethiopia and its capital Addis Ababa, the diplomatic capital of Africa. Today we celebrate the 127 anniversary of His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie. At the same time, when we are celebrating our one year anniversary, since His Excellency Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed made a historic visit to Washington DC to visit Ethiopian in the diaspora under the motto, tear down the walls of hatred and build the bridges of love. In the past one year, we have achieved many and our hope is even brighter. Uh, and uh, yet we need to know our history, celebrate our giants and do forgive each other build, love, and claim our destiny together. It's better together. Thank you. May I, I don't know, please call upon Salome Mugeta. She's an actor, writer, journalist, and then producer. And then we have uh, Tamra Medin. Uh, he may really share about her, her life and then uh, her immense professional work. Let me give him only three minutes. Members of the Ethiopian Royal Family, the African Union Ambassador, the Mayor of Washington DC, the Ethiopian Ambassador, and ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor for me to introduce an Ethiopian American filmmaker, Ms. Salome Murugeta, at this very important event where we are gathered to celebrate the commemoration of the 127th birthday of the iconic former Emperor of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie I. Mulugeta was born in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. At an early age, she left Ethiopia to attend a boarding school for girls in Bedford, England, where she studied acting at the School of Theatre, where she won many prestigious acting competitions, including Outstanding Performer of the Year, she was held as a forceful talent. I would like to use this opportunity to thank the district mayor and the district council for working together with us for the last uh, 40 plus years in many uh, programs, including we are now uh, at Isawa and Washington DC, our sister cities, um, and many other programs the city uh, they worked closely with us. Uh, Amharic, the national Ethiopian language, is one of the six languages. I just heard the, May, the ambassador was quoting that was using second language, but the Amharic is the official language in Washington, D.C. So if you want to use it, you can use it. And also, uh, Mayor Muriel Bader was very kind to work with us in 2015 to uh, have the International Food Day, where we were able to help experience 46,000 public school students in Washington, D.C. All this, we have to give credit to His Imperial Majesty's six state visits in the United States, 
beginning from 1954, and the city has been very kind to honor him uh, by giving him the city's uh, uh, key and also honoring him with a doctorate degree. So this is timely that the younger generation know a lot of work has been done and things are coming out now. I'm very happy with that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, this is a great honor. I'm incredibly overwhelmed and uh, humbled for this great honor, uh, particularly because I am receiving it on uh, His Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie's birthday. It is the ultimate honor to get this award on his birthday. This award with my deepest gratitude. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to the Excellency Ambassador Fizu and Excellency Ambassador Adriana and the Honorable um, Mayor Bowser and the Royal Family of uh, Emperor Haile Selassie who are here today. And thank you so much for coming for this event. Um, so when I found out that I had to give a small speech, I didn't know what to really say. But I have something to share with you from my experience of making uh, my small film, Woven. Um, the, the, the film took about 15 years to make, um, in part because we didn't have the money for a while. And um, once we got the money, we had to um, assemble a team of people to kind of do the film that we had in mind. So film is a um, very collaborative media and endeavor, so you are always going to be with these people. So initially, the gathering the theme was very hard because we were really looking for people that we thought would be the same race, same background, same ethnicity, um, but we couldn't really find those people to be woven. So what surprised us was the team that came to do this film that took 15 years uh, were very different. Um, so we had three principles that really pushed the film. One of them is Nagwa Ibrahim, Egyptian, American, um, and Muslim. And she was my co-producer, co-director. Uh, the next person was Charles Shire. He was Jewish, American, Caucasian. And the third one would be myself. I am Ethiopian, Eritrean, Christian. Why I'm saying this story is because what we had in mind was to work with people that looked very much like ourselves, but God had another plan for it. He gathered people that were very different on paper, you wouldn't think these people wouldn't work very well, but it was the contrary. These people had one thing in common, which is the human bond and the human connection and the human emotions, which are love, kind, forgiveness, being kind, forgiveness, joy, pain, and surprise. So when telling you this story is what I've learned on this journey of making this film is that humanity is deep down in the core the same. We all have emotions that are the human emotions, which are love, kindness, and pain, and pain sadness, and joy, and forgiveness. So what the journey of woman has taught me is that the human uh, emotions are the same. So if we can agree to disagree, if we can have empathy for our differences, if we can love more, if we can hate less, if we can hear more, and listen more, and talk less, I think the world would be a much better place. Thank you. Thank you. This, this flower also presented for um, four golden flowers, presented for a salami. Thank you. Mr. Imperial Highness Prince Elias.
and Princess Maria. Thank you so much. Please put your hand. Thank you so much. I just uh, want to thank uh, Your Excellency for opening your doors for us this, today. It's a historic day. I think it's a day where, as you said, we open our hearts, our minds. We don't look to the past and we look to the future. And we're so happy to be here to receive this uh, award and uh, we, we hope for a uh, better continued success for Ethiopian Airlines. Thank you very much. Hey, when the Bachchan, Bachchan is a host and Demon Ganana you won him. That's the norm of the term, you child and you want, and that's how the film will actually be more common. I hope they will get them, Nafsun Katari, Pasa Venus Yanuridin, Yes, I was a lot of the hour of the evening, sir, and the caracan. The summit is a good job in school records. It's a good job in the town, you must do. And I can then, Kasuga, David Cross, Yetavado, yes, Ra Akaro, no. The summit does you, it's a good job in the beginning, not should not handle. And so the top of it, which is in the land. ጀመሪያ <laughs> We want to see uh, some of the. Can you open the projector again? Just to see some pictures of the plan of the continuous. The Dr. Rakana, uh, permanent representative of the African Union to the United States, um, welcome again. Um, Yes, I told you that. I was going to take a break again. No, I am not going to come back. But I told you that I will not come back. Here in the bar, we have a lot of Zambia. Yes, I told you that we are all in the same boat. 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 What is the matter now? His Excellency Ambassador Fusu Marenga, the Honorable Mayor, Mayor Browser, Her Excellency Ambassador Aritana, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Today, the 16th of Hamley, or the 23rd, marks the 127th anniversary of the birth 
of His Imperial Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie the First. Today we also mark the achievements of his remarkable 83 years of service to Ethiopia, to Africa, and to the world, and to his faith in God. The Emperor is generally regarded as the inspiration and guiding hand in creating the organization of African unity on May the 25th, 1963 in Addis Ababa. But that act, but one, but that act was one aspect of his inspiration for Africans, for the African dignity, for African harmony, and for the Africa he totally embodied the concept of African dignity. African harmony and leadership, which Ethiopia could demonstrate to all Africans and to those of African descent. His forebearer, the Imperial Majesty Emperor Milik II, gave the initial forces and a rallying call to Africans when in 1896, in the Western calendar, he staged the first major defeat of Africa, of uh, major European allies by an African force. But it was Emperor Haile Selassie's defeat of invading uh, Italian forces in 1941, which gave the West its first victory in the war against fascism. In that, he inspired not only the West, but all of Africa. And with that action ensured that European colonialism in Africa was to become a thing of the past. The emperor, who was foremost proponent of collective security, was a great prophet of what would happen if the world succumbed to fascism when Italy invaded Ethiopia again in 1935. He told the League of Nations that today it is us, tomorrow it will be you. His The Emperor was not only a globalist, but a profoundly passionate nationalist and an inspiring regionalist. He saw no conflict in his beliefs that the nation-state of Ethiopia, a collection of Jews of different people, languages and cultures, could become a vibrant and self-reliant entity while also championing the rise of all African societies within the context of global trade and cooperation. Today, as we see such great schism between globalists and nationalists in many countries around the world, we do well to learn from the emperor and his lessons. And in Ethiopia itself, we would do well to understand why he champions each and every group and culture within our great common identity of, as Ethiopians. He did not believe any component of our great Ethiopian society, but rather sought for each facet of our cultures and religions a place in a glittering Ethiopian identity. In so doing, the Emperor pioneered the creation of states, modern states in Africa, which could embody diverse cultures and people. He was then the great exemplar of unity, of inclusion, of cooperation, and of ensuring that all people felt valued, inspired, and had the ability to contribute and soar to, the full, to their fullest destiny. We are here today also to thank His Excellency Ambassador Fuzo Marekka for opening the door of this embassy on this historic day. It has been an amazing year to witness the erection of the statue of His Imperial Majesty at the African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa. We are grateful to His Excellency Ali Ahmed and his administration for having worked with the African Union to make this a reality.
pray that peace prevails in Ethiopia, and may God bless the sacred memory of Ephraim Celeste. African Heritage Airborne, the Nigerian, the Kenyan, the Ethiopian, the Victoria, and the beautiful Olympics. So, Ambassador Ken, give a round of applause. Good evening, my fellow African diaspora and friends of Africa. To His Excellency, the Ambassador to uh, Ethiopia, to the family members of the uh, royal family. I see my sister here, we were together just a few days ago. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to join us to celebrate one of our heroes. 127 years ago, a giant was born. A giant after having lived in an Africa that was divided and chopped up into tiny little economies that clearly could not survive on their own. A giant who said 56 years ago, enough is enough, that Africa can no longer continue to be divided. A giant who took it upon himself to call on all his brothers and sisters who were leading the continent back in 1963 to come to Addis Ababa, just like they did when they met in Berlin, Germany. <laughs> what was done to the continent in Berlin was evil, plain and simple. And the emperor said, we must reverse the Berlin Conference. So he called upon all his brothers to come to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Precisely, just like they met in Berlin to see to it that Africa and her children are forever defeated and dominated, they met in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia at the invitation of none other than Emperor Haile Selassie to say, see to it. to see to it that the children of Africa can no longer be divided and that the children of Africa must come together and that Africa must speak with one voice. 